Welcome to the Inside Nebraska Recruiting Blitz podcast. I'm joined today by Steve Merrick. Steve, it's middle of Ju- middle of July. Um, you know, kind of dead period. We're 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 getting through it. You know, Nebraska's picked up a couple commits. Um, you know, we're kind of kind of just uh, waiting waiting to see at this point. Kind of in a holding period. Kind of waiting till the end of the month. And um, so figured, you know, we'd have some fun this week. Uh, just just talk some big picture stuff. Just have some general um recruiting discussion you know with uh with uh not a whole lot of updates to give in terms of uh in terms of actual recruiting so um we'll start you know kind of touching on you know some of some of the roster the current roster some of the the future additions some like, stuff we're waiting to see from the 2025 recruiting class maybe even a look ahead to 2026 as nebraska kind of starts to turn their attention there as well um well first off steve you know middle of middle of july um kind of kind of how do you kind of this 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 period between June, the busy June, and then July, and then August, going into going into camp and all of that, things get busy. But but kind of how do you how do you usually you know occupy your time during during this time of the year? Well, from my from my vantage point, from my side of the content with over here at Inside Nebraska, it's a little difficult, uh, I, I think, to come up with stuff to write about. But you know, it's it's a way to get creative, and um, you know, I'm I'm starting to dive into some hypothetical stuff, which I think will drive some, hopefully, drive some um, communication, just some talking back and forth on on the board, and um, just you know, create some hypothetical stuff that that gets people talking. But yeah, right now, I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot of honestly. I think it'd be a good time to um check out the opponents, see what their rosters are looking like. Um, you know, see, see, uh, coaching staff changes that they had, um, that I maybe wasn't as locked into, um, during December when it was super, super busy around here. Um, but you know, for the majority of the part, I think everybody's roster is kind of set these days and, um, you know, so it's, it's good to kind of see, see who Nebraska will be playing and, um, just kind of go from there. But, uh, yeah, uh, big 10 media days, Nebraska is talking July 24th in Indianapolis. That's going to come up sooner, um, pretty fast. So yeah, I'm um, anxious, <laughs> anxious for that. Oh yeah. No, that'll, that'll, that'll roll up here soon. You know, it is, it is July is all every year feels like just, there's nothing happening. It feels really dead. You know, there's some commits of course, but uh, these are usually guys we already know about either know they're coming or like, no, this is about the time when they're deciding anyway. So it's, it's, it's no, no, no big, big surprises during this month. no, no crazy anything. And, and like you said, you know, with, with the transfer portal and anything, everything like this is the time where we can actually reflect on some of these other rosters and kind of look around and mm-hmm. see who is on this team. You know, like it, it, like uh, all of the, the the shuffling and everything, things can get lost in the shuffle. And, and you oh, yeah. forget like the other day, I just, and this isn't a Nebraska point or anything, but the other day I just remembered, oh, Bill O'Brien's the head coach at Boston College. Like That's I just a think that one. I forgot this, this <laughs> offseason, you know, just this. This 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 every offseason now it feels like just so much happens you forget about little things like that so yeah just like you you know kind of diving back in on on those rosters as well just to get ahead of the head of the mm-hmm. season but also you know kind of putting together some notes taking some obviously vacation time as well but uh, you know enjoying this kind of this kind of down period before we get into the craziness of the season and and recruiting and 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 things you know getting getting ramped up there um, but but you know let's dive in on some topics here um, kind of wanted to touch on. First to kick things off, just on the on the recruiting side of things, kind of what's left for Nebraska to address this cycle. Um, in my personal opinion, just kind of coming off of what where, where Nebraska's at, you know, double digit commits sitting here in the middle of July. Um, you know, only a handful, maybe ish spots left. You know, I would I would say maximum ten to ten to twelve spots, but I'm assuming less than that, just in this in the in terms of just true high school additions this cycle. Um and with, with where Nebraska's at, you know, kind of, kind of what's left, what, what, what's important for them to address. Um, you know, I think it's two key positions still, like it's the two positions that have remained, um, I would say wide receiver and linebacker, just, just with inside where, linebacker, right? Yep. Especially mm-hmm. where both those rooms are right now, you know, like, like with outside linebacker with Jack, you have some young bodies, you have some guys there that, um, can contribute, um, you have a commitment from from a guy like Michael Malcolm Simpson who can kind of play all over the line. Uh, Pierce mm-hmm. Berry is another guy that can potentially occupy that jack spot down the line. Um, mm-hmm. But that true middle linebacker spot, um, you know, they're 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 waiting on you know what what's going to happen with Christian Jones. That's the most important target left on the board for them, regardless of position. But he's starting to become, especially with Dawson Merritt, you know, committed to Bama. Um, this is becoming 
even more and more important for Nebraska. Um, and that recruitment's kind of gotten a little interesting, you know, coming out of June that uh, that Oklahoma OB kind of made a big impression on him. I had a feeling going in, you know, when I was talking to people on Oklahoma side, like, hey, this is this is, there's a chance here in Nebraska. Um, you know, I mean, there's a chance here kind of like that, that Nebraska comes out of the month, like feeling good about where they stand. But at the same time, like I kind of have a lot of intrigue in that Oklahoma visit because that's kind of been a school that's lingered there for a while. But momentum between both programs and I mean, both side, both parties has never really taken off. But mm-hmm. just talking to Christian and knowing what I know about him and knowing what I know about Venables and that staff, I had a feeling going in, they'd fall in love with each other. And it seems like they have, you know, I, I, and I don't necessarily think. Oklahoma is a favorite, but I think Oklahoma is kind of coming out of June as as the 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 biggest threat to Nebraska. Um, so that recruitment is really interesting. You know, he's he's potentially looking at a OV to Miami at the end of this month, and potentially OVing to Wisconsin in the season. So again, I'm not expecting a decision here for a while, but at the same time, this is still a recruitment that I think Nebraska is starting to get more and more not necessarily nervous about, but more so just. Hey, this is becoming more important. Like we, we kind of need this guy. We need him to stay in state. Um, Does so, it kind of remind you how it's playing out um, with Chase Lofton and Florida State and Nebraska and that relationship and how Florida State kind of took over towards the end? Yeah, I mean the Florida with, with Lofton was interesting because the way that one kind of worked out too was was for a while I kind of thought A and M was the lead there. I thought they, the yeah. ground to make up was on A and M, not Florida State. Mm-hmm. But I did think Nebraska had ground to make up. I think the difference between Lofton's and and Jones is Lofton's exploded this spring into like a true national recruitment. But prior to that, you know, post Nebraska offer those couple of months there between him landing the Nebraska offer and him turning into a national recruit, Nebraska was far and away the favorite. And mm-hmm. he was, he, he really wanted to like explore that option of staying home. Um, but then when the opportunity arose to potentially explore some opportunities, way out there, you know, like out in Florida, out in Texas, he, he took, he jumped on those and took that, took that, um, took that. But I mean, Jones has had national options for years now, you know, like he, he could be at a lot of different places right now if he really wanted to be. Um, I think the way this is playing out is not, not in a similar way. And I don't think this, I still think this is going to end up coming down to Nebraska and whoever. And I still do think Nebraska ultimately comes out on top here. But it's getting interesting, you know. It is. It is getting interesting, and it's when it's one of those recruitments that um, I'm just I, again. He's he's kind of maintained. He's looking for a home field, and the fact that he's not committed now kind of says that he hasn't felt that anywhere just yet. And mm-hmm. you know, we've talked about this plenty at this point. But really, the one thing he's left to see from Nebraska is results on the field. So you know, I think him pushing into the fall is not a bad thing for Nebraska. But um, just in general, man, that position, I think with where some of these guys are, you know, Bullock's gone after this year. Um, you know, Javen Wright's uh, gone. Yep. Javen's gone. And, um, you know, Stephon Thompson, how much are they going to get out of him and how much, you know, like what mm-hmm. is, is he going to be much of anything? Is he going to be able to, to contribute like, and, and how do they replace him down the line too? You know, so there's some yeah. young guys in that linebacker room, you know, Vincent Shavers, you hope kind of lives up to the hype he kind of built in spring. And that's a guy that, you know, it will be on mm-hmm. campus for a couple more years. Um, Dylan Rogers is the guy the staff is high on. And, um, you know, there's a couple of the linebackers in there they, they, they like, and, and some young guys, you know, that could potentially earn some playing time and, and, uh, you know, work themselves into the rotation. Uh, I mean, one, obviously, Willis McGay, he kind of didn't have the spring people thought he would, but still a guy that the staff seems high on seems um, a guy that, you know, can contribute down the line. So, there's bodies in that room, but I think they really want to get find that immediate key contributor, which Jones would have would be. Um, and mm-hmm. again, the same thing. I I do think they're going to keep working on Dawson Mary. You know, still try and see. You know, oh yeah, some positive results this fall. Kind of potentially open his open his mind back to the Huskers. You know, is that is that is that even in the cards for him? Is he locked down? Um, you know, that's something we 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 we're, we're waiting to figure out. But but linebacker is a key position, I think. Um, all the all this to say, you know, linebackers, I think a key position. I'm still curious to see how they address in these coming months. Um, and then the other one is is receiver. Like they're still looking for that big outside receiver. You got Bryson Hayes committed. He's that that slot you wanted to address this cycle, like kind of the guy of the future in that mm-hmm. slot role, and a guy that I I still think we're not talking enough about in terms of yeah what he means to this class, um, and or what he could be, you know. Um, but you know. We saw, you know, some decisions recently. Corey Sims went to USC. 
but Nebraska was out of that recruitment, you know, prior to June, they didn't even get a chance to host someone on OV. Um, you saw uh, Manuel Choice commit to Oklahoma. You know that mm-hmm. that that one was tough for Nebraska, but that was one we've kind of maintained. It was always going to be tough to uh, to overcome Oklahoma. Um, same thing with Cortez Mills. You know that was that was a decision that just didn't go Nebraska's way, and unfortunately, you know that was one that Nebraska did lead for at times in the spring. But but and he's not necessarily a big outside receiver, but he has outside receiver capability, wide receiver one type potential. So that was a guy that you know they, the staff really wanted. So. You've missed out on some on, on some key targets. You know, Michael Terry's still out there aiming for a late July decision. And as things stand, you know, like there's still some ground to be made up on Texas. Oregon's made a big impression. So there's some work there too. So it's like, you know, I, I, Michael Terry isn't necessarily a done deal either way, but, you know, there's no guarantee that he's going to be the guy in the cycle. So I do wonder, like, are there some more offers that go out? Do they circle back in on some recruitments? How do they address that need at wide receiver? Because... You look at the room right now, and and there's a lot of names in that room right now. But mm-hmm. you look at the very top of that room, Jamal Banks and Isaiah Neor. With good years, both those guys are one and done at Nebraska. Sure. And there's a there's a good chance those guys are one and done at Nebraska because of just what they're capable of and the limited mm-hmm. eligibility ha- they have and where that kind of room is at too. There's a chance there's going to be some spot. There's there's going to be some playing time to be had after this year. Nebraska would like to have another young guy that can kind of come in and take that. You know, like. Malachi Coleman hypothetically could be that big outside receiver, but we don't know enough about what he is just yet. Um, he missed really. spring with an injury. He, yep. he had some flashes, obviously, as a freshman this last fall. But what is he this spring? You know, I mean, what mm-hmm. is he this fall? You know, and so, and there's some other names in there too. You know, Keelan Smith. You know, there's some, there's some, there's some guys with that big outside receiver potential. Young guys with big outside receiver potential. Wayne Clark. Yep, exactly. And if he stays uh, at receiver. If he stays a receiver, right. And mm-hmm. so that's the thing. Like I with some of these guys, like going into looking ahead to next next year and the year after, like kind of are they want talent to surround Dylan Rayola with and they have missed on some guys. And so I've kind of we've kind of talked about this. Like I, I think this is a position that kind of takes care of them of, of itself. Nebraska produces the way they should this mm-hmm. fall. Dylan specifically produces the way he we kind of predict he will this fall. Um but what who's that name who is that name like i i that's 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 yeah. a good question i think there's going to be i think there are options they're just like like we've been saying it's they're young and a lot of them is untested i keep thinking about garrett nelson or not garrett uh, carter nelson i know he's listed at tight end but he's not going to be a traditional tight end he's not going to be an inline tight end um blocking defensive ends i don't think that's in his future at nebraska i think he's going to be a receiver uh, just a big bodied receiver at 6 foot 4 6 5 um, put some muscle on him. He's still he's still a little bit small. They, he needs to develop and get bigger in the weight room, which every true freshman does. And he wasn't here in the spring. He'll be a summer. He's here right now um, for fall camp. So there are there are options. But yeah, like you said, I love Quinn Clark. Um, I'm just wondering what he's going to develop into because he's so huge already. I mean, he's so athletic looking. Uh, watching him high jump in Montana, um, just watching his body move like that. A legit six five. I mean, Chim- that Tim that one. Uh, camp that we went to uh in june uh quinn was walking around and boy he looks six six <laughs> he's, just, six. he's yeah. just huge he's just huge and and so that makes me think uh yeah mentioned carter nelson thomas fedoni is going to be playing some um slot receiver basically uh in their system so you know there, there's big options right now but i totally agree with you they they need to hit on some um big bodied wideouts uh just to be competitive in the passing game in the big in the big 10 when dbs are um, just getting bigger and bigger these days as well. And it's just a tough, tough game. And, you know, the weather that Nebraska plays in, you always want to be throwing to these big guys um, so that can use their, go up and use their bodies to their advantage and come down um, with the ball. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you with Malachi Coleman. Um, I, I think he showed flashes of some really good stuff. I really, really loved what he showed as a blocker. Um, he really, I think, kind of focused in on that. And he had that edge, that nasty edge of, sprinting his butt off to get to a safety or something to get his, to get his uh, assignment in the blocking and, and on a run play. He did that many, many times. I last year as a true freshman and that had to, I know Garrett McGuire absolutely loved that because he talked about it in a press conference. Um, Janarin Bonner, I know that's kind of a an odd one too, just a big body. I'm not Where as tall. Where does he fit as, in? That's, that's, yeah, that's I know. Hard. He's yeah, just well, like a, yep. like, I don't, 
I don't know. I don't think he's going to be playing fullback as much uh, like he did last year. Uh, maybe some H back, some off, some offline tight end, um, some slot receiver. So there's a thumb up on, on the zoom for those watching at home. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That one's, that one's interesting too. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like what's the plan with some of these guys? It, um, and I guess that you can say that with a lot of the recruits that they're bringing in because the positional flexibility that this coaching staff has eyes on with, with a lot of these guys, you know, you bring them in and you just see how they develop down, down the line. It's just a process. I mean, they're not lying when they say that they're a de developmental program. Oh, for sure. And I, I think back to a comment kind of that rule made in his press conference in June, um, kind of talking about the roster and the, the, I don't think there's the, there's many unknowns kind of go, obviously the offense is a big unknown, but that's something that we, we kind of all know at this point, what we have an idea of what that's going to look like, but we just kind of need to see it in, you know, of mm -hmm. see it, see it, see it come to fruition. But um, there are some unknown individuals and, and I think rule mentioned it and, and um, it was right, you know, going into last year, there was a lot of guys that are now considered key contributors that we had no idea what they were going into the year. And, and uh, you know, there's a real good chance we could go in, in and out of this 2024 season and come out being like, oh, this guy, this guy, this guy, like, hey, like, or like, you know, like, yeah. for the example, Malachi Coleman, what is he? We may come out of the 24 season being like Malachi Coleman, Nebraska's returning wide receiver one in the future, you know, like, yeah. um, like, or Nebraska seems to have at least a wide receiver core. We, mm -hmm. There's a chance we come out of 2024 being like, all right, Nebraska's got a pretty stable wide receiver core of Malachi um, you know, where, where, uh, Jalen Lloyd obviously will be right in that mix. Ja'Cory Barney, Alex Bullock, yeah. uh, you know, and, and with Bryson Hayes and some of these guys coming in, there's a chance mm -hmm. some of these unknowns turn into knowns throughout the season, but you still want to be stacking talent on top of each other. And I, again, at some point you do need a hit on one of these big time receiver targets because you're casting a wide net. You're really involved in these recruitments and you're doing a good job of selling yourself. You just need mm -hmm. to close at some point. And I think Garrett McGuire still needs that big win for him. Corey Barney was good one last year, like oh, a yeah. real big win for him. Malachi Coleman, the cycle before keeping him in the boat, that was a big win. But get one of these national guys, get one of these guys you have to fight off some of these blue chip programs for. And, and you know, like you said, with I, I'm thinking back too on you look around the conference right now, look at the two DBs uh, that. Uh, Ohio State has committed. They have the number the number one and two corners in the country committed. One mm -hmm. is a legit six three. The other one's yeah. six, one six two. They're getting bigger. Look at, yeah, every look year at, they're getting yep. bigger. Elite look defensive look. backs are getting bigger. Oh yeah, and and so mm -hmm. Nebraska again, their goal is to be. You know, Matt Rule said it. Um, it's a matter of for for them, the staff truly believes it's a matter of when, not if they they make that college football playoff push. Like mm -hmm. They they're really confident in themselves. I think he told Joel Clat, Clat that on 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 Fox. But um, you know, it's a matter they 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 have this confidence in themselves, and, and if they truly want to aspire, want to get to these these heights, they need to land these big elite receivers that can hold their own against these big elite cornerbacks. And and wins are going to help that. But also, more importantly, if Dylan Raiola shows up as a true freshman and starts tossing the pig spin, pigskin around and looking good doing it and like making national headlines. That's going to attract them. That's going to attract guys in the transfer portal too, who are looking for a new home and looking for a better quarterback situation. If they see that Dylan Raiola is doing what everybody expects him to do, that's going to be very, very attractive to those guys as well as the high school recruits. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so that's, again, like, I think that's a position that'll, that'll somewhat take care of itself, but mm -hmm. you just never know, you know, you can't bank mm -hmm. on, you can't bank on. And, and we know at this point, you know, we followed yeah. this program for as long as we have, you know, no guarantees that there's you know, no guarantees feel good. Any, feel anything good. that I just we said feel, is going to happen. Right. We feel good about this potentially working out, you know, like I, again, I, we've watched Dylan as, as for a couple of years now, it's, it's hard to see him, you know, failing, but at sure. the same time, you just yeah. never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. you, you have to see it to believe it. And so that's the thing. They just have to prove it at this point. And, and if, mm -hmm. when that does happen, this receiver recruiting will somewhat take care of itself, but yeah, we just, it's, it is kind of truly just kind of wait and see mode there. Um, yep. And as far as, you know, looking, reflecting on this class, the current guys that are, that are committed, um, you know, I kind of mentioned, I don't think we're talking enough about Bryson Hayes. I think there's a couple guys in this class. We're really not necessarily not talking enough about, but you, you look at the ranking, you see the three star by the name and you're like, Oh, you kind of, yeah. you kind of dismiss it. But but there's yep. some guys in this class that I truly think down the line will, will be important play, players for Nebraska and important pieces 
to this program. The one that comes to mind, a very recent addition, addition uh, center Houston, Kehana Torres. Um, that was my pick. I, you watch his film and yeah. you look at the frame and you look at everything and you, you, you talk to people, you know, in, from Hawaii, you talk to people that have scouted him. You talk to people around him. This is a kid that is wired the right way. Does, does oh, a yeah. lot of the right things from a work standpoint. You know, he's playing, he played right tackle at St. Louis last year out of necessity. This year, mm -hmm. he's flipping to the left side and learning left tackle. And you ask him kind of, what do you think that adds to your long-term game, knowing you're not going to play this position down the line? For him, it's all about quickening his hand speed, quickening his foot speed, learning how to keep up with these big, faster, you know, edge rushers that are that are bigger and longer. He won't have to deal with that at the college level but because he'll be moving inside to center. But he's going to be dealing with big, fast guys and – now that he's got this technique to the point where he's able to keep up with these faster, longer edge rushers, that should only help him. So you look at his tape, there's a guy that's polished technically, there's a guy with really good balance, really good feet, really good, again, balanced in terms of his body, like how, where, how he's proportionally built, um, no real bad weight on him, like a true like 270, 275 right now can get up to 300, maybe even 310 at the next level, is wired the way you want a center to be wired, like has the makings of that future leader of the room, kind of what like what Ben Scott is right now. Um, mm -hmm. And again, we've mentioned this before, but funny enough, from the same high school as Ben Scott, um, yeah. those two have had conversations. And, and you know, I, there's there's a feeling that, you know, Houston can be the center of the future for Nebraska, potentially mm -hmm. even as soon as next year. You know, he's enrolling early. He'll be competing for that spot. Nebraska's training up some young centers behind Ben, you know, working in that rotation. But Houston's a guy that I think can really come in and earn that starting spot. You know, if he comes in and does things the right way. Talked with him, um, talked to him over the phone. I think it was like in January or something when it, whenever he set his official visit. Um, yeah. He just sounded like a mature leader. He sounded like a center. I mean, I mean, Tim, we talk to guys a lot. Sometimes the centers are, they're just the smart dudes. The offensive linemen in general are usually like the really smart, mature guys in, in my, in my instances anyway, talking with these guys. But so that was a great pick. I, that was my number one, uh, Houston, Ka'a, Ina Torres. Um, but my sec, my backup plan, um, for, for somebody that I think is being a little bit overlooked in the 2025 class, uh, Pierce Mooberry. Ooh, and we, yes. we mentioned, yeah, we mentioned Pierce before, maybe a little bit un, under recruited, um, overlooked by some programs, but anytime you have the length that he, that he has, I'm forgetting what wingspan he told me he had, but, um, it's, it's big, it's long. Anytime you have length, like it's Pierce for sure. Movie. Plus it's a, it's a plus size oh, wing. I think he's got a couple yeah. inches on his wingspan over his height, which, which is always yes. love to see. Absolutely. That. Whenever you have your, whenever you're working with those traits on defense, whether you're, like a rover slash safety hybrid, or you're a linebacker, maybe like an outside linebacker type. And we mentioned his potential to grow into a Jack linebacker in Nebraska system. Um, but anytime you're working with that stuff, it helps so much. It helps you against the run, whether you're tackling somebody or you're setting the edge or it helps in pass coverage. I just really think that P Pierce Moodbury is going to have a really nice career at Nebraska. Yeah, I agree. And wherever yeah. he lands, whether that's yes. linebacker, Jack, um, Heck, I don't know. Rover, I would love. I mean, Tim, I've talked to you about this. I want me a big rover. I want uh, somebody to come into this class and just be like a six foot four, 210 pound. He can flip his hips. He can run with everybody. I know those guys don't grow on trees, but it just reminds me of a video game out there. Just, you know, uh, picking the biggest guy and um, having him just run around and, and be a ball hawk. I love that. I see a little bit of that in Pierce Mooberry. For sure. And uh, I was I was surprised, you know, I went and saw him in seven on seven this fall, a couple of times, actually, in seven on seven this this, uh, this spring and um, watching him move around in coverage is a lot of fun, man. Like he mm -hmm. covers up a lot of space and he, he's a lot like, you know, for a guy that's relatively raw in terms yep. of development and technique, he's really natural at reading quarterbacks eyes, dropping into his spot, like getting in and out of getting in and out of space and um or just in and out of like the 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 quarterback's eyes, you know, like where he's looking. He's he's really good at tracking that. Really good of getting into like some passing lanes and 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 like just blocking it off. You know, it was a, a couple of plays I remember just in the seven on seven tournament. I saw him in where where he kind of drops back and eliminates three potential targets in one. You know, kind of drops yeah. back deep enough where one doesn't become an option. Steps forward, takes another step forward to prevent another one, and then comes all the way down to kind of. Uh, 
clear out the check down. Like just a really impressive young man and uh, a lot more polished in that in that coverage game than you than you would expect. Um, mm-hmm. A lot more natural, I'd say, not polished necessarily, but a lot more natural in in that pass coverage than you'd expect. And yeah, no, I I, I completely agree. You know, I, I think he's a guy that may need some time. You know, before he's sure. necessarily ready to play. But I think it's a guy mm-hmm. that for sure factors into like special teams pretty early on, you know, can factor into that linebacker rotation pretty on or a year or two in the mm-hmm. weight room. And, and he's in that linebacker rotation as well. Like, you know, like you mentioned, you know, I think we'd, we'd like a big, a big rover. That would be, that would, yeah. that would add an interesting chess piece to this defense. Someone got so someone you can move all over the place. And again, in the big 10, where week to week that the number one weapon you're facing differentiates team to team, you know, sometimes you get like a Braylon Allen. Sometimes you get mm-hmm. like a, <laughs> like a big, big tight end. Sometimes you get a Marvin, you know, not necessarily Marvin Harrison Jr., but Ohio yeah. State's always going to have an elite, just an elite receiver. Elite who's receiver. Be in the You're NFL all, in three so years. you want someone that can that can hold their own against all three of those. And you know, hypothetically, Pierce could be that guy. They've got a couple of those, but at least another one of those body types in this room. And Jeremiah Jones, another guy that mm-hmm. could be that rover type that mm-hmm. is an ultra athletic, lengthy athletic back seven defender you know that's basically yep. the best way to put it is a back seven defender what can occupy any one of those seven back seven spots and so um for for nebraska i think i think pierce fits too and again he fits the culture more than anything too that's a guy oh, yeah. that's going to come in bought, bought in obviously a legacy like gonna is going to come in and buy in and and uh you know i, I was going to mention you know just if, if if i had a backup name here too as well his teammate yeah. Caden from us like <laughs> That was by number three. Yeah, that guy but, bleeds Husker red. I, exactly. He's gonna get. Yeah, he's gonna give everything that he has in his body, physically and mentally, to this program. I mean, he's just he's everything that a fan or a coach will want. He's going to give it everything he has. And yeah, I, I see rover potential with him, but uh, safety as well. But yeah, I mean. Caden Vermas. I mean, there's a lot yeah. to like there. And and you again, you watch the film. This is a guy that just he plays with his hair on fire. He loves yep. the game of football. He loves to hit. And you know, it's interesting. You, I, I I spent some time talking to him when I was out at Miller North, and um, he's like, you know, Nebraska. They haven't really talked about exactly they, for sure safety, but you know, they haven't really talked about where exactly in that rotation he fits in. He's kind of interested in that rover spot just because he loves. And again, yeah. you don't hear this from DBs ever but he loves fitting the run. He loves working mm-hmm. into that. You don't ever hear that from DBs. We're guy to be as passionate as he is about it. And again, like Pierce is six, four. Yeah. Caden's like six foot, maybe six one. Yep. Maybe like these, these aren't guys that are used to hit or like usually typically like to hit, but he loves to hit and he's got a background in MMA. You see that pop up, you know, in his tackling form. Like he just finds ways to get guys on the ground. Um, yeah punish guys and you know what i mean so he loves to hit he loves to be in that thing and 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 watching him run around it's hard not to look at him and be like there's some isaac gifford in his game you know there's there's some there's some gifford in his game and so Mm -hmm. and nebraska would love another one of those types and so you know we've we've talked about we would you know we'd love to have that six four rover in that back end it would just be a fun chess piece for this yeah have to have but at the same time a guy like Caden kind of embodies what they want in that position in terms of the mentality and the physicality and then just the athletic traits you're kind of looking for there. He fits all of those things. And so he's the guy that's going to come in and he's going to play whatever roles needed of him to see the field, whatever roles needed for him to help the team. And obviously he's already doing that from a pure recruiting standpoint, doing what he can to help the program. Um, but at the same, on the flip side of things, you know, he's also long-term is a guy that, that, factors to be a leader for this defense down the line oh, yeah. factors to be single the, digit type guy yep exactly and so um just a fun player man like a really fun player mm-hmm. to watch i'm really excited to go see miller north a couple of times this fall um kind of watch them. you know an interesting note there i don't think he's ever going to play corner but iowa did talk to him about being the next cooper DeGene or the next riley moss like they did recruit him to be that true like corner and Again, like he was like, I would just prefer to fit the run and I want to work into this like safety <laughs> thing, which which I completely get and I completely yeah. understand. But the fact that again, and and you know, I understand feelings are complicated towards Iowa, but we, we can't discredit the fact that they know what they're talking about when it comes to defensive back play, specifically yeah. corner play. And the fact that they see that in Caden says a lot about his well, talent. It goes into um Pierce Mooberry too, his first offer, Iowa State, John Heacock. Knows a little something about 
being a defensive Linebacker. coordinator. Yeah. So, I mean, every, anytime that John Heacock offers you, um, that's, it's like, Oh, it catches your attention. Like, Oh, that he sees something. I mean, there must be something to this kid. So uh, that that's what got me onto Pierce Mubray first was his Iowa state offer because uh, John Heacock knows what he's talking about. Right. Right. And so, yeah, you, ha- you have, it's important to look at those things kind of like who's offering, who cares about these players, you know, like yeah. I've, I maintained too. Nebraska's working on Bryson Weber trying to land him and, He's got a Utah offer. Every time Utah oh, offers yeah. TV, you take Morgan, that. Morgan Scali knows what he's doing. You know, like yeah. that's a guy that he has a real good eye there of developing and and not only developing, but really good eye for talent. You know, they're always in early on these on these really talented DBs. So you see a DB with a Utah offer, you pay attention. So, yep. um, but yeah, you know, and and just kind of t- 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 touching on um, some of the current roster before we get out of here, I guess, uh, just wanted to mm-hmm. rattle off some names we think have the most to kind of prove these old young guys kind of a mix of mix of that of just like going into this 2024 season who were who were some critical pieces for nebraska where it's kind of like not necessarily boom or bust but their trajectory can change drastically this year the first name that pops into my head is isaiah nair so we know we know like isaiah and and what he did at boise state he was awesome big Wyoming, play threat Wyoming. No, oh Wyoming. Yeah, my, yes. my bad. I, <laughs> I'm I'm picturing him running running for a touchdown against Boise State's defense. <laughs> um, but anyway, Wyoming. Um, anyway, um, you know, he'll be two seasons removed from his ACL that that he tore uh, fall camp, Texas, two seasons ago. Wherever you read, wherever you listen to guys who have that injury, it's the second season when they come back that they truly feel that they're back. Thomas Fit only could be could fit in that same um timeline. Um, but I want to know if Isaiah uh, Nair, you know, what is he, is he, is he for real? Is he going to be the Wyoming version or is he going to be the Texas version that, that didn't see the field really? Um, so I'm, I'm just really interested in, in Isaiah Nair because he's big, uh, six foot three over 210 pounds. He's probably one of the faster guys in the room. Um, he's going to take a lot of shallow crosses, I think, uh, and get his legs going. Um, he's going to be a deep threat as well. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm, I'm really, cause if, if they hit on Isaiah Nair, that's going to open up so much more. It's going to benefit Jamal Banks on the other side. It's going to ben- benefit the run game um, by potentially it's benefit keep... Jalen Lloyd. Like that, oh, that yeah, opens up Jalen Lloyd to kind of work from the inside, work from the mm-hmm. outside. Like if you have to account for two, mm-hmm. six, three plus receivers, and then yeah. Jalen Lloyd and his track speed, and Carter Nelson and Thomas Fedoni, that's tough. Like, there's not many teams in the Absolutely. country that have the, have the secondary to keep up with all of that. Again, hypothetically, we need to see these guys prove it. But, mm-hmm. um, no, I, I I agree on Nier. Like, I think – and, you know, the, I've heard some stuff coming out of Texas. He wasn't all the way locked in. I've heard the complete opposite at Nebraska. He's kind of fully bought into the program and the culture. Um kind of understands kind of it's do or die for him as well. I think, yeah, it's yeah, exactly I think that. I think he too. realizes what his situation is right now. Exactly. And it's, this is, this is it. So, right. um, you know, I think he's going to be locked in and everything. And just like I was saying, if he can scare defenses into putting a safety over the corner, I mean, that's just going to open up so much more for the run game, for everybody else in the past game. Um, you know, I, I just, I just, I'm really interested to see which version of Isaiah Nair Nebraska is getting. For sure, for sure. Um, for me, I kind of just uh, there's there's a couple I could have gone here. You know, kind of one, one I'm I'm really curious more than anything is kind of curious to see what happens with Dylan Rogers. Just more so in the sense of like that line drive, like we said, the linebacker room is really interesting right now. There's some older veterans that uh, you know will depart the team after this year. There's some young guys that have come in and and stepped up. Vincent Shavers, notably, obviously, has come in, stepped up, kind of earned some playing. Like looks to be in line to play a good bit as a freshman. Um, but Dylan's a guy that's been in the program for a year now, kind of entering his second year. And you kind of wonder, like, you know, I, it, it, if it doesn't come for him, come together for him this year, will it come together? You know, there, there, there is a path to playing time in the fall, but if he can't even crack the rotation, this, like, do we see him crack the rotation this fall? Where does he mm-hmm. fit into that linebacker room? They love athletic linebackers. And, and I kind of have some questions there of like, Dylan's filled out well, has some good muscle on him, has some power, um athletic enough but you kind of wonder you know especially in the big 10 and what nebraska specifically asked for the linebackers is he capable enough like is he fast enough is he is he agile enough to kind of keep up with keep up in space with some of these guys so i'm really curious to kind of see what they get out of him this fall and where what this year means for him you know this is this is the type of year where he has 
a couple of good flashes that he can build on. You know, that this is one guy that I think boom or bust very much so where we come out of the fall thinking, oh, you know, even though Nebraska is stands here, here with their linebacker targets or has these linebackers committed, we feel good about the linebacker future with Shavers and Rogers, you know, or you come out of it being like, okay, Shavers showed us some stuff. Um, who's that other linebacker spot now that Bullock's gone? Who's that linebacker spot going to go to? Like, who's that? Like, is that still going to be a question mark after the year? I'm really curious by that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like another, like another good name. I think Tommy Hill's another one, like in yeah. a similar, not in a similar boat to Neo, but just a veteran guy that now has a lot of hype and has basically a year, maybe less of like true elite production. Like last mm-hmm. year down the stretch was a real, real good corner. Um, and the, the, the nation took notice, um, yeah. but yeah, his name has been everywhere on social media about top returning corners in the country. I mean, he's, he's especially, in, or I guess maybe pair it down to the big 10, but yeah, his name's everywhere. Right. Um, and so you kind of worry, mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah, you worry how, about how he's going to respond to that. How does he respond to that? Does he build yep. off this or does he, is, is there any potential here of like regression back to what yeah. we saw before, you know, the year before, and then like, you know, the Arizona state career, like does, does mm-hmm. some bad habits pop back up? You know, is, is he still locked in? Is he focused by all accounts? No, by all accounts, he is locked in, but mm-hmm. you you wonder, you know, you do, you, you do have some questions there. It's in the back of my mind. Um, for sure. It's also in the back of my mind opposite him. If Sierra, Wright, The USC transfer um, does indeed win the uh, cornerback two job. Um, what's that going to look like? I mean, it, you know, I don't know, man. I, I like I told you before um, on a, on a previous podcast, I got I got some red flags that popped up with me when I was just learning more about him, researching, um, finding out about the acting career. But the good thing is, you know, he's coming to Lincoln, Nebraska. That would tell you that he's focusing on football and not anything else. Because in order to play for Matt Rule, B O O U, do all of that stuff that they want you to do. It's a full time job. You need to be absolutely one hundred percent dedicated to football uh, to play here. And if he's not, it's not going to go well. But if he is, then he has a talent and he has a, a position coach in Evan Cooper, who I think um, is good enough to bring that potential out of him. So uh, Nebraska, is, is Nebraska getting a stud in Sierra right? I don't know right now. That's what I want to know. I Like y- you asked, uh, you know, to to give you some names of most most to gain, um, most, to, most to prove. Sierra Wright is right at the top of the list, like one of, one of the top names right now. Uh, yeah, good stuff on Sierra Wright right there, uh, Steve. And, um, you know, kind of before we get out of here, um, any other names I think we off the top of your head, kind of you're thinking kind of make or not even make or break, but just uh, just curious on kind of heading into this 24-24 season? I'm curious on Thomas Fedoni um, because, like I mentioned with Isaiah Nair, uh, the ACL injury, uh, Thomas will be two seasons removed from it. Um, and, you know, Last year, I think it was his first year there really playing football for a, a, a very like, like, you know, playing a good amount of football for the first time in a long time. So now that he has that season under his belt, I'm really interested to see what year two looks like for Thomas Fedoni. And last year he had some uncharacteristic drops that I think um, disappointed him. And I think it, it might have surprised some fans of like, oh, that's not Thomas Fedoni. I mean, that doesn't look like Thomas Fedoni. Um, but now, you know, he's he's got that year of experience. And I really think that, you know, with better quarterback play, um, you know, because, you know, we we saw the quarterback play at Nebraska that struggled, you know, a lot of the times. So, um, you know, whether it was Thomas Fedoni reaching behind him um, and, and getting lit up or uh, just trying to haul in an inaccurate pass, I think with just better quarterback play, um, Thomas Fedoni is going to flourish in, in this, in this, uh, new, new Nebraska, maybe Dylan Ryle led program. So, um, and you know, the play caller is his position coach in, in Marcus Satterfield right now. So I think there's a lot of things set up for Thomas Fedoni to take a next step in his development. Um, yeah, I, I just, you know, he's big, he's fast. He looks like a monster out there. He's a legitimate, you know, receiving threat. And I think somebody that could, uh, potentially, potentially lead the, lead the team on receptions. So, you know, we'll, we'll see, but um, Thomas Fedoni, two years removed from his last ACL um, with better quarterback play. I think he's going to take the next step. And um, that's just going to be something that a lot of people around here are, are, are hoping for, I think. So I'm really excited to see um, what Thomas Fedoni can do. For sure. I agree. And um, you know, with him too, kind of just, you, you go back and look at like 
the high school film on him and yeah. how exciting that was and and you mm-hmm. know some of the real flashes of there what that potentially could look like but you know who knows what how close he can get to that form coming off of these injuries you know these are the type yeah. of injuries at his size and you know with the added mass like he's always he was going to lose a step a bit of a step but how mm-hmm. much has he lost you know like can he get back to like you know he was hobbling a bit last year can he get back to kind of running even running steady this year um and the tight end position as a whole you know is a, a, what what a, a really interesting development is just how important that position's become for the staff um yeah. especially when you look back at the previous two stops they've had and even the 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 the, the, the stop with the panthers and and it wasn't like the tight end was necessarily the focal point of the offense at any of those places, you know, but it's kind of becoming that here. And that part of that is who they have, what's accessible to them. You know, they, they inherited Fedoni. They have Nelson mm-hmm. coming in. They had, they, they won that recruitment, you know, so the, 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 out, is it out of necessity that the tight ends becoming as important as it is, or is this a position that they kind of see as uh, the way I kind of see it as like a chess piece kind of uh, position where if you can land elite guys consistently and you can build a room with two three guys at that room you can create some mismatches and it's kind of one of those positions where um again may not ever lead the team in receptions or yards or touchdowns but becomes a very critical part to this team so i'm curious to see kind of what that vision is especially now that like you said marcus satterfield's kind of taking over there too like how much yeah. more cheered is he um you know offensive coordinators are always going to tell you that they they they're calling the best plays to win but at the same time with Satterfield in charge of this room you know you're expecting the Titan is going to be a little more involved you know you're, you're expecting mm-hmm. he's going to want to feature the guys in his room a little more you know and so um and again with the addition of Nelson how does that affect Fedoni um mm-hmm. how do some of these other guys in the room come along you know we saw some flashes from some other guys we saw like I think I think I like what I saw from Ian Flint you know in the in the spring game and, and through the spring um already a good blocker how much can he add to the past game um you know a guy like ismail smith flores like kind of where does he fit in eric ingerson he's new like how does he fit in you know is he just going to grow into a tackle yeah. down the line is he just going to stay a tight end you know so there's a lot of questions mm-hmm. in that room in general um but yes i'm very curious i'm very curious in the, on that room as a whole um as well i'm trying to think i mean one obvious name kind of coming out of this to close this off is dylan dylan Rayola. um yeah. you know kind of just a lot of hype, obviously, probably regarding to a point at this point where it's maybe too much, not even too much, but it's just we're, we're fully, we're in full go. You know, we kind of expected that coming out of the spring game. Um, yeah. Once the fan base kind of got an, uh, got an idea of what this looks like on mm-hmm. in Memorial Stadium. And then once they saw those those glimpses, you know, I think this this train is, you know, gone off the tracks at this point. Um, oh, yeah. we're, we're, we're full go um, with, with mm-hmm. the hype here. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I don't have a whole lot of doubts, you know, and it's like me and me and Zach have had this conversation where, you know, Zach previously prior to covering Nebraska covered Ohio State and, and me prior mm-hmm. to here, I covered Michigan and Texas A&M. So I've seen at other programs what it looks like when a starting or like a, a, a high elite caliber quarterback takes over a program. Zach saw it with, with CJ Stroud and Justin Fields, and he was like, you know, you know, going into it kind of. This is what it looks like. You see the way they command in practice. I saw it with J.J. McCarthy down in a- at AM. I saw it with Connor Wiegman. You know, he's been hurt. He's dealt with some injuries. But I truly believe Connor's that guy at a and I've seen it twice now. So Jack's seen it twice. This feels the same way. When you know, you kind of know, like, you have that guy. Nebraska mm-hmm. feels they have that guy. And, again, it's not hard to get excited by the film, the high school film of him. It's not hard to watch the spring game and get yeah. excited. Can he live up to the hype? Can he put everything together? And again, what is what are expectations for year one? We don't we we have you know just expectations of you know make a bowl game in year one. That's mm-hmm. that's pretty much the expectation for the t- team as a whole. But a month into the season, what are the recalculated expectations for Dylan Rayola look like? You know, after getting a month of him with with some big games in that first month alone, like you know that Colorado game is is a real tough test week two, just in terms of the hype, the expectations, everything that's on that game. Um, mm. playing it's a lot for Travis a teenager. Hunter. Oh, yeah. It's a lot on yeah. a teenager. And, again, playing Travis Hunter, the cornerback, I, I I, truly do believe a lot of people are underrating Travis Hunter, the cornerback. Like, again, he's he's very hyped up. I get it. 
mm-hmm. they're kind of talking about him as this versatile athlete versus man, this is one of the best corners I've ever seen. Like watch wow. him in zone, watch him in he's elite, like locks mm-hmm. down the side of a field. Like I, I say what you want about Colorado. You can't say a whole lot negative about what Travis Hunters did for them last year. And sure. I predict he's going to do this year or, or, you know, kind of build on that, that year. So mm-hmm. you, you're going against a team where pretty much one side of the field, you just can't really target, or it's a, re- it's a real risk to target. Um, That's always tough. And so that's mm-hmm. week two, you know? So what does this look like? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see kind of what, what that all looks like um this year. But again, that's a, a kind of cheating to, to close this off, but you know, middle of July, let's have some fun, you know? Yeah. I got two more names for you. Go ahead. Um, one, So one of them's on offense, Dante Dowdell. He was a massive, massive, like when he, when he committed to Nebraska, it was like really exciting. Cause they're like, wow, Nebraska's getting a, a, a running back from Oregon. I and mean, then you do a little research on him. You find out he was just playing, but he was stuck behind a lot of older established guys already. So it's like, yeah, it makes sense that he wants to go out and, and find a spot where he could potentially play a little bit earlier in his career. And that's at Nebraska. But, you know, in, in spring camp, like you, you didn't really hear a lot about Dante Dowdell a lot. Did you, Tim? I mean, it, he, he was, you know, six foot two, 215. He's like that big back, you know, when you, when you ask Matt rule, like what he wants in his running back room, he's, he says, you want a big physical downhill back, but you also want to mix in some smaller shiftier speed guys. So that's a nice plan and everything. And Dante Dowdell fits. He's like another Gabe Irvin in there, except the healthier one with a good hip. But um, you, you just didn't hear a lot about um, Dante Dowdell in the spring. And and then you kind of hear here and there um, things pop up where maybe he's not as, you know, in tuned with like the finer points of being a running back. That's like really important to somebody like EJ Barthel and Matt rule, like pass protection on third downs for running backs. That's really super important, especially if you're playing, with uh, a true freshman quarterback. So, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in see what Dante Dowdell turns into um, how, how often he's used early in the season um, and you know, what, what his role is going to be, because I go back to when he committed, whenever it was um, from, from um, Oregon. I mean, he was, it was really exciting around here. Everyone's like, wow, our running back didn't have a lot of juice, but now it does with Dante Dowdell. And then you just kind of didn't hear about it much. So that doesn't mean that, you know, maybe, maybe the coaches are playing games and everything um, just to not tip off opponents that like, Hey, we have something here, but um, yeah, I, I'm just really interested. So that was my first, first name. Then the second one, um, Alvano, Tristan Alvano, field goal kicker. Um, this is going into a second year. Um, it was not a, a great performance last year as a true freshman. Again, he was in a, a tough spot, you know, being a field goal kicker. Um, a lot of it's mental, um, he had a lot of pressure on himself, but he missed some big kicks that really would have really helped out the team uh, last year. Um, they, they bring in Jacob Hole, um, former Lincoln Southwest and Iowa Western Community College kicker, to just add some more competition, add another body to the room. Nico Ottomanelli is another true freshman um, kicker on the roster. So I'm I'm going to be, be paying attention to um, Tristan Alvano for sure, just to see if there's any improvement there. Um, because if there's not... I don't know. There's other options that the coaching staff could go to if it comes to it. Yeah. And that's a position where, um, you know, special teams is, is ob- one, obviously important, but two, another, the, the, the staff is keyed on, on trying to eliminate those mistakes. And, and, you know, Nebraska fans are all too familiar with special team mistakes. And I, I, I don't think you're one that gave them some grace. I don't think they're going to have that yep. grace if, if, you know, he gets off to a bad start to the year um, yep. on Dowdell, you know, kind of, I, I think back to, um, well, I, I didn't cover him in high school just because he was a Mississippi player. Never really, when I was at the time, I was on the AM beat. He never really considered AM like that. But I do remember One of the most fun huddle too. highlight videos oh. I've ever seen. His huddle. Don't say Dell Dell. Like, if you want some entertainment viewers at home, just go and, and watch his senior year huddle. I mean, it's so fun. Yeah. And I remember talking to, uh, at the time, Nick Harris, the, the regional analyst at the time for Rivals, and, and he was covering um you know the uh, mississippi was one of the states he was charged with and i remember when when he first saw dowdell's film and kind of sent that to me it was just like hey keep, keep an eye on this kid and so um mm-hmm. but this was a guy that you know finished off with a four star and again that's this is when nick first found him but you know over the course of his career finished up as a four star and and look at what was written about him going into oregon not what happened that freshman again he's walking into a program at oregon that like yes he was the fourth string there but understand that Oregon as a program is in a much different place than where Nebraska currently is as a program. And the running backs he was behind, one of those guys, Bucky Irving, is in the NFL right now. He was a he was a top four-round draft pick 
Yeah. Um, you know, and he projects projects to be, you know, in a, in the rotation as a rookie in the NFL. Um, these he was behind NFL guys, you know, and, and mm-hmm. it, 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 he he transferred kind of out of a need to get somewhere where there's not as crowded sure. of a depth chart, but that doesn't mean anything about his talent. He just walked into nope. a really loaded room. Mm-hmm. Um, in Oregon, that's a position that you know they've 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 done a really good job with. And you, you look at the position coaches he's had; they've talked highly about him. He's you know done all the right things since at least getting to Nebraska as well. Um, I think people should be excited for him. I I, I do think you know that mm-hmm. that running back rooms uh question mark and just in terms of who's going to finish yeah. off at the at the top at the end of this, you know, like. Uh, uh-huh. It, it's 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 going to be a rotation again, but I think yeah they'll they'll the rotate they'll rotate yeah. and find the guy. But I think mm-hmm. down the stretch of the season, a guy like Dowdle, as big and physical as he is, like that's a guy yeah. that going into November, especially weather gets colder, you're just trying to out physical some teams. That's a guy that you know I think the the, the team ultimately yeah. leans on to kind of close out some games. It gets cold. You're playing Wisconsin. You're playing Iowa. You're at USC Heck, you're playing, in November you have, you see, and you, you want to show UCLA comes to town for the first yeah. time in, in winter and, and you're like, hey, welcome to the Big Ten. Here's try yeah. and tackle this guy in, in uh, yeah. 25 degrees. Exactly. And Nebraska goes to Los Angeles to play USC in November. Give a little dose of a Big Ten running game with Dante Dowdell. I mean, I'm sure that's going to happen too. Like, hey, Trojans, try to stop this, son. Just a heavy dose of... Uh, um, Dante Dowdell. So I, yeah, it, it's just he's he's really interesting. Again, loads of loads of talent. I love how big he is, six two, two fifteen. Um, yeah, I just hope it all works out. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, well, you know that'll do it for us. Uh, it's been a bit of fun episode. Uh, we're 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 kind of excited to kind of get past this point of July, get into get into Big Ten media days, get into fall camp, get into the season. I think we're all just kind of itching for football at this point. So yep. we'll, be, we'll be back soon enough, I think. You know, it's kind of counting down counting down the days at this point. Um, but we'll be back soon enough. Uh, but that'll do it for us for this week. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe this video, or like and subscribe. Um, and uh, like, like we said, that'll do it from us. And uh, we'll see you next week.